Audible lets you enjoy all of your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. Hey, Ronnie, what have you been listening to on Audible lately? Well, you know I love some wellness in my life. Yes. I read a lot of books that help me, and especially because it is a new year, okay? So I've been really working on my habits. So I've been working on Atomic Habits by James Clear. That's the title I'm really into right now. It's my New Year's title. And guess what? Um, I'm already habitually, atomically better. Great. Well, here's something to also make you better. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. Wondery's new podcast, Dis and Tell, wades into the glorious mess of celebrity beef. Each episode explores a different iconic celebrity feud and asks, what does our obsession with these feuds say about us? Follow Dis and Tell wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is part two of a two-part recap. If you're wondering where part one was, well, go check in the feed and be sure to subscribe. Let's get right back into the episode. So then um, he's, you know, basically thinking he's super smart, which I thought yeah. it was pretty good. And he's like, seems smart. yeah, if they walk into a trap, then the murder gets blocked and like a ton of information is revealed. Like, that's the best case scenario. You know, it's going to feel so good if this plan works. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it seems smart. I just, I, my instinct was you're, te- you're already telling too many people. You can only tell the one person that you suspect because otherwise if you tell more than that, they're going to swap notes. You dumbass. <laughs> you dumb, dumb. Yeah. So, um, Janelle, now they're, they're all just like talking and stuff. So now Janelle's talking with Kevin and MJ and Bergie and she's like, you know, I just think we all need to like collectively talk as faithful and as a group who we think is the traitor. And I feel like yesterday was a distraction. Dan, he's not giving me anything. It's so obvious. He's a traitor. He hasn't given any information. I know his gameplay. This matches his gameplay. This totally works. And you know, Kevin was like, what what uh-uh. <laughs> but you're a he girl. hasn't even done anything <laughs> what did what did he do she's like i literally just <laughs> explained why i know why exactly i know what's dan and he's like but dan didn't do anything what? <laughs> it's like isn't you are proving your point kevin you fucking idiot terrible group project participants yeah he's a dumbass so he's like, yeah, you know, facts are Janelle's behind every banishment. So Janelle's a perfect traitor. And if not, then she's a sloppy faithful. And getting rid of her is going to make room for more logical choices for us to get the real traitors. <laughs> she's literally providing you with logic. She goes, here's the deal. If I'm throwing out, a, she, and here's some great logic she does right now. She goes, if I'm throwing out ideas and trying to identify a traitor, I'm being faithful. Someone that's a traitor is never going to try to figure out who a traitor is because they already know. They don't have to do anything. All they have to do is sit back, right? So let me, in, in summary, sitting back and being quiet, most likely traitor. Being loud and being ridiculous, like me right now, most likely a confused faithful. So what did you take away from that, Kevin? Uh, you're a traitor and dance faithful. <laughs> you're a traitor. You're a traitor. You're a traitor. <laughs> He doesn't get the logic at all. But he's excited to be able to get rid of Janelle so that way they can make more logical decisions. Yeah. Uh, you know the last time I did this? Like, I went with Larsa. She goes, yeah, I know, Kevin, I know. He goes, yeah, and now we're supposed to go with Dan? I just don't feel good about it. You know, you just, like, keep telling us what to do. She's like, I'm, I didn't say we had to. I'm just saying, like, he's a traitor. So do what you want. So now MJ is saying that she has suspected Dan because he's super quiet, but Janelle has gotten her hands dirty and she's been, you know, she, she's been pretty cutthroat and accuses other people. Could that be that she's implicating that she's a traitor? Uh, no, <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, this is classic sign of a, of a faithful who is totally confused. Yeah. Um, now MJ is like, I'm going to talk to Dan and Sandra. 
So she immediately goes and she's like, uh, Janelle's coming for you. So watch your ass. He's like, why? What's the reason in this game? <laughs> and Sandra's like, oh, I thought that was your girl. And she goes, wait, she's getting hard. Okay. She's like trying to get us to vote for Dan. And they're like, why, why, why? And she goes, because you're never giving your suspicion, Dan. Like you're always saying like you're saving it. And, and he's like, but it's because I don't know. <laughs> Oh my God, how do they not pick up on this? Also, how could they not pick up that like Janelle doesn't need to go hard on someone if she's a traitor because she can just murder them at night? <laughs> like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So they are still and so so Dan's like, no, no, I'm not mad at you. Thank you for telling me, because in this game, you gotta have information. And here's what I know. Nothing. I don't have any ideas. <laughs> and he's saying, you know, this is my first time getting heat but uh, she's dangerous and I'm going to have to take care of her. Dun, dun, dun. So he goes, yeah, to throw my name for no reason. That's the same thing that happened to Larza. And now it's me. And she goes, yeah, there's like so many red flags. You guys, she is so convinced. And it smells like shit. <laughs> so then in another secret meeting between Dan and Parvati, he's like, oh, great. They're coming for me now. You know, what are we going to do? Janelle wants to, to, get me out and she's like okay then we got to take out janelle and he goes i don't know i guess it's because i don't say any names okay here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go into the rest of this episode not saying any names <laughs> i know it's like dan do yourself a favor and just come up with some cockamamie you know story for something because people are getting on to you so alan's like they, it's time he's like the he goes alan talks to us he goes the round table so far has been a disaster for the faithful. But will the tables turn? Tonight is like no other. This game started with one player missing. And we get a flashback to him in the first episode saying that there was a player missing, which I had totally forgotten about. Um, thankfully, thankfully to NBC, I was complaining about this a few weeks ago, NBC, after the third episode, like released, like they did like a press release saying, oh, Kate Chastain is going to be joining the traders, and they blasted it everywhere in People Magazine and EW. Everyone wrote an article saying, Kate Chastain's joining, and, like, I guess this was a NBC-sanctioned spoiler, but also, like, what the fuck? I would have liked to have been surprised naturally instead of, instead of you know, via EW. I saw that she tweeted something about it, and I there was a clip. I didn't watch it because I don't want to be spoiled. But um, I just figured she was going to be like a guest or something and come in and be like, hi, idiots, it's me. You're all dumb. I don't like you, you know, uh, and then leave. Like, do maybe like a ch lead a challenge or something and then leave. I didn't know she was actually being brought back in the game, but she is. She's a murderer, and her yes. name is is Kate Chastain. And she comes in and she's like, hi, I'm back. <laughs> Did you miss me? And she goes, oh my God, it's a love letter from Alan. He's obsessed. Dear Kate, you're faithful. Oh my God, I hear his accent from this. Oh my God, could we turn the level of Duolingo down for this? Thanks. <laughs> well, I'm a little, says, dear Kate, you are faithful. Huh? What's the opposite of saying, huh? I'm a little disappointed that I'm not a traitor at this time because I really want to see the turret. And I also just want to have a special coat, you know, with a hood, but in velvet and velvet and everything. And also, I just like to get the power to get rid of people that I just don't like. Just be like, get rid of that one. Disgusting, stupid. Hey, where's Rachel? Wherever she is in life, get rid of her. That'd be so great. It would be awesome if I could just murder people here that I just don't like in my real life. Like Rachel, get rid of her. She's stupid. Um, Let's see. Oh, that girl who's really bad at mopping on my second season. Fuck her. Fire her. Get rid of her. You're really fun. Oh, um, what's the name of that for that stew? We don't Adrian. Get rid of her. Gross. Uh Caroline, wherever you are, I just want you to know you're murdered. So <laughs> just anyone, just a random person. Just get rid mm. of them. Okay. We had too many croissants. At a round table meeting. Dan's like, walking into this round table, I don't feel good at all. I'm heavily targeted as a traitor, but I'm not out of this thing. I do my best work when my back's against the wall, and I have a few tricks planned up my sleeve now by not naming anyone. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> 
Janelle's like, I know, I know Dan's a traitor. He's the best Big Brother player I've ever, I've ever, who's ever played, I've ever played with, and I am a hundred percent here to win. Dan's got a coming, and I'm going to start by being a total disaster at this roundtable. That's why I'm going to accuse Dan and twenty other people. <laughs> Extremely that's why I'm going to. That's why I'm going to do whatever I can to get people not on my side. <laughs> you got Janelle. Oh my gosh. Everyone, okay. here's why you should trust me. Because you're all traitors. <laughs> Welcome. Now listen to what I have to say. <laughs> Welcome. The traitors have murdered people. The prize pot currently stands at a cool $75,500. 500 which should be spent from Bell and Barbara, Peter's mother, out of local jail. <laughs> <laughs> Got myself in a little slutty trouble here. But that'll be up to you later. Let's welcome back somebody who terrifies blue collar workers and white collar workers all the same. Kit Chastain. Please welcome Kate. And then Kate walks in. They don't even, they just sort of like wedge her chair in there. They don't even like make it like nicely spaced out. <laughs> and no, she's got like a folding chair. <laughs> like the someone extra came for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I know. <laughs> They're like, uh, ma'am, I'm sorry, this reservation is for eight people. It's okay, just like put me in the end. So Kate's like, I'm sure the players have a preconceived notion about me, either that I'm a bitchy person or a wild, unpredictable person. And all those things are true. And they're still ugly and unstylish. So, ha. Huh. Mm -mm. Please take your seat at the child seat in the round table. They've kept uh it warm for you. Players, Kate will have a vote. At this table. Hold on, costume change. It's me, Alan. I'm now wearing a dress made out of paper tools. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Janelle's like, welcome, Kate. And Kate's like, um, thank you. Tell me everything. Who do we hate? And also, why is this folding chair so flimsy? Could you guys not have gotten just any other better chair than this plastic one? I feel like I'm going to fall backwards any moment now. Is it lunchtime? Why is that guy eating with his mouth open? And Kevin's like, um, I'd like to state my case without being interrupted, if that's okay. She goes, okay, well, <laughs> can I already see who the douchebag is, so. Yeah. That's He's fun. like, um, this group has a tendency to talk over each other and interrupt without listening. So just to let you know, heads up, I'm about to put a name of Janelle on the table as a traitor today. Janelle, you've had a pattern of bringing up names and they've been banished. And it seems that it's always a morning discussion of Janelle being a traitor. And then somehow it turns out that she's able to rally people up in the evening. I'm like, yeah, it's been a morning discussion of everyone being a traitor, you dipshit. <laughs> and then more of his evidence, he goes, you know who else thought you were a traitor? Eck and Sue. And she was murdered. I was like, oh, okay. Listen, you can't bring Eck and Sue into a court case. You know what I mean? Like, you can't. No one's. You're she not helping Sue. your case. She may have Sue in her name, but do not bring her into a court case. Okay. <laughs> like, also, the worst thing a traitor could do is if someone is like vocally against you that you murder them. <laughs> like, that is like the most obvious thing to blow your cover. Yeah. Um, she's like, oh my god, I'm honestly not this mastermind you think I am, Kevin. Okay, jeez, I'm not a traitor. And then Bergie's like, I just want to say, if I was a traitor, I'd not be throwing out names like Janelle, you know? And if you're yelling out names and you're always incorrect, I mean, people would banish you just like it's happening right now, right in this scenario, okay? I mean, she creates chaos, and the traitors like chaos, and that's why she's still here. It's like, wow, look at Bergie coming out of left field. Who, I know. Whoever saw this coming, not me. So Kate's like, um, so who do you think are the traitors? And Janelle goes, um, okay. I think Dan is a traitor. I was like, oh, yes, yes, yes. And CT, I was like, oh, no, Janelle. She goes, you were acting strange, and I think you're either working with a traitor or you are a traitor. And Sandra, you're a traitor. Also, let's let La overlook Alan. He's kind of a traitor. And I think Kate, Kate's new. She's a traitor. Also, I'm just going to say it right now. Boogie. I know he's not technically in this castle right now, but I did play with him in season seven of Big Brother. I think he's a traitor too. Julie also, Kim, there was a her. there was a stuffed peacock earlier um, that made a funny recorded noise. Probably a traitor. I'm just saying it right now. I was like, "Whoa, whoa! You should have stopped, it. Dan. What are you doing? Now you're just like shooting all over the place." <laughs> I know. Can we talk about Deontay? Because even though he's not here, we can all agree he's still actually probably hidden somewhere, and he's probably being a traitor, right? Yeah. We all agree on that. 
Oh my gosh. So she's just called Sandra a traitor too. And Sandra's like, well, all of these days we've been in sync. And then as of today, you come in here saying it's, you know, between me and Dan and like, what kind of crap is that? Huh? That was bad. I think actually it was, it was really bad going against Sandra and CT. Cause I think they could have been really persuasive to Janelle's side. So Kate's like, um, Sandra, who do you think are the traitors? She goes, well, I gave Janelle the benefit of the doubt, but I think that she's the traitor. And CT's like, he's like, yeah, since we've been here, I've done nothing. You, a I've done everything you asked for, and now all of a sudden, you get some, you get some heat on you. You're just gonna like throw me under the bus, which is too bad for the bus because I like to see a bus try to drive over these thunder thighs. Am I right, everyone? I would just like to say something at this stage. Uh, Janelle has got tremendous ability. She can see the others around her. And without boasting, she can make an assessment that she she's well placed to succeed. And do I hold that against her? I don't. Okay, thanks. He's like, and thanks, John. hold on. Let me try and breathe from my inhaler. <laughs> That's not even a real inhaler, it's a Diet Coke can, you stupid bitch! <laughs> so Kevin's like, oh, really? Well, John, who do you think it is? And then John's like, well, I told you last night, and I thought you were the traitor, actually. <laughs> so, John, you were doing well. That's not going to help move the needle on Kevin, though. <sighs> And your conduct is the conduct of somebody who shifts from one persona to another very suddenly. And Janelle is consistent to Mana. She's awful. <laughs> awful Janelle. and shallow. That's one pool that a baby can always swim in. And for that, I say thank you. I'm not going to say that Janelle is a total disaster, but I will say that she did accuse me of breathing funny minus three seconds after we were all given our roles. So <laughs> that's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Mm. So um, Kate's like, um, MJ, what's the name of the guy who's talking again? And she tells him, and he goes, Kate, could you listen? <laughs> wow. I was like, you better be careful, Kevin. You do not want to mess with Kate. And she goes, oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. You think Janelle's a traitor. Got it. <laughs> and Kate Thanks. does the Kate thing where she just goes. <laughs> <laughs> she does like, like an inside ha. Huh? She's like. <laughs> She's like, you have no idea how awful I can make your life. <laughs> so um, uh, John is like, Kevin's like, no, I, I see you weren't listening. I said, I'm talking to John right now. And John's like, well, I think you're talking to the table, traitor. And Kevin, <laughs> Kevin is such a cocky asshole. Like, how, you can't be dumb and cocky. Yeah. And he goes, so now just because I'm an actor, I'm a traitor. First of all, no one has proof that you're an actor. I don't think that anybody yes. has proof. You can call yourself whatever you want. There is no evidence, to, sir, to suggest that you're an actor, okay? Yeah. Uh, like, literally no evidence, including probably an IMDb <laughs> credit. Um, I think that Heather DeBro probably has a longer IMDb than yours, Kevin. So, <laughs> Kate's like, um, are there any other names anyone's thinking of? Because I'm getting bored. And Peter's like, um, I hate to say it because we're close. <laughs> You're talking about me, your mother? Oh, we are close. God, I love my son. No, mom, there's got to be at least one guy in the traders based off of nothing. So, and I look at all the guys that are left, and do I feel like you for sure have contributed the least? Yes, Dan. And that is kind of a red flag for me. So I'm going to say Dan. Um, by the way, he has been in the Asian or a, something called Asian Persuasion in 2023. Bling Empire, which obviously not an actor, and something called Ugly Model in 2019, and one episode of something called the Netflix After Party. So those are what he's been known for. He's done. He's got four acting, 14 acting credits. It's not bad. Let's see. Heist, Morning After, Gone Wrong, Dev on Depth, Dating After College, Cat Loves L.A., Bruce, Finding Tomorrow, Phantom I, Never Heard of Anything, Sir. I stand by it. Yeah. Still, I, uh, I, I do not believe that Kevin has a notable acting career. Mm -hmm. So Kevin's like, he's a politician. He's just accusing me because that's what politicians do. They take your taxes and then they accuse you of things. Everybody knows that. 
<laughs> so uh peter accuses dan peter's like i'd like to say something dan's a traitor and dan's like uh kate i know you don't know me and i like to hear evidence and reasons why you think that and kate's like well you also win everything yeah but um i don't take it personal so you think i'm a traitor like i'd love to hear the reasons why i've done that to make you feel like i'm actually a traitor right now so like if you have one some reasons uh like can you give me some because like in this game um i'm not a traitor so i think that pretty much absolves me thanks and janelle says um literally when i come to you and say give me a name like who do you think is a traitor and like you like literally have nothing to say about it dan never anything to say dan i mean come on dan yeah and he's like yeah no that's a great question by the way that right there is the, is a tell if, if someone goes that's a great question in the middle of the round table that's, to be that honest with you let me be honest with you right now okay i yeah. gotta be honest that's another one because the way i'm playing this game is the way i play big brother i'm like and you why won would big brother dan <laughs> okay so you won big brother through mass deception he's like i can use those skills to help find the faithful i learned a few people you know i learned a few people and i i put a, a, a thousand percent trust in them and then sitting back and waiting to see who the traders are like that's how i'm gonna do it and she's like you've done nothing dan okay all you do is sit back and don't say a name and you do nothing and you just watch people and he goes oh okay so that means i'm a traitor doing nothing okay she's like yeah because you're not acting like a faithful <laughs> and now to like, me okay. this is obvious i mean of course we know that dan's a traitor and that's the thing where it's unfair because it's like of course it's obvious i know but i just think dan is so, such a bad actor i can't believe this wasn't completely obvious to everybody yeah and like when he says like like i you know I, i'm playing this game the way i play big brother as if that's supposed to exonerate him i'm like anyone who's watched big brother knows that dan is like extremely he's extremely shrewd with his social game like that is not an advertisement for being faithful yeah so then um trishelle agrees she's like yeah dan never says anything guys and the rest of us put targets on ourselves and Chanel goes yeah like me i just named 30 people i just named people from wheel of fortune okay contestants <laughs> of wheel of fortune i named as traders dan okay and by the way trishelle makes a good point too which is not only is it suspicious that he doesn't put out people's names but it's also not being helpful to the group because he's not contributing any ideas or or thoughts so yeah. like, wow trishelle actually came up with a point so peter's like okay just prove it just prove it by giving us one name and he goes okay well i'm gonna say janelle well yeah because janelle's coming for you you know and mm -hmm. this is another thing it's like obviously and she's you're like, gonna say target janelle. at the table you're just you're, well you're just like piggybacking onto kevin's cockamamie theory right right so so he's like, I think I've been blinded in my friendship with Janelle. And the thing is, I have an issue with is that like, we can't pin all these banishments on one person, but you led the charge and more than, uh, than anyone else. And you've taken two or three shots and missed and I've defended her and I shouldn't have done that. You know what? But that's my fault. And I can't trust you anymore. I can't move forward with you in this game. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens commercial. A new year is a great time to grow your business, but if you're stuck in the trenches of daily tasks like managing order fulfillment, you're not able to focus on what really matters, increasing sales. ShipStation can help increase your profitability by automating your workflow and keeping costs down with industry-leading discounts. No matter where you sell or how you ship, your business can grow with ShipStation. The order details page easily automates shipping tasks and manage orders in one simple dashboard. Yeah, the order details page lets you quickly and easily update crucial order information and reduce errors. It's effortless integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. ShipStation has enterprise solutions that reduce warehouse costs and improve profitability. ShipStation's robust automations and reporting make scaling easy. And as your business grows, you can save thousands on shipping costs. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation, and 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Make this year your most profitable one yet with ShipStation. Use promo code CRAPPENS today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 30-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code CRAPPENS. Being an actual royal is never about finding your happy ending, but the worst part is... If they step out of line or fall in love with the wrong person, it changes the course of history. 
I'm Arisha Skidmore-Williams. And I'm Brooke Ziffrin. We've been telling the stories of the rich and famous on the hit Wondery show, Even the Rich, and talking about the latest celebrity news on Rich and Daily. We're going all over the world on our new show, Even the Royals. We'll be diving headfirst into the lives of the world's kings, queens, and all the wannabes in their orbit throughout history. Think succession meets the crown meets real life. We're going to pull back the gilded curtain and show how royal status might be bright and shiny, but it comes at the expense of, well, everything else, like your freedom, your privacy, and sometimes even your head. Follow Even the Royals on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen to Even the Royals early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus. Dun, 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 players. Time for the talk. Is over. And now it's time to vote. So now they're now they're gonna vote and everything. They're gonna go around the table. So MJ votes for Janelle, which I was very disappointed with. I'm like, MJ, you were on the case two episodes ago. You you sniffed it out and you've completely abandoned that instinct. What is happening? This is not right. I think when people accuse somebody else and that person doesn't go home, they're like, okay, well, I accuse them and I guess I was proved wrong by the fact that yeah. they weren't voted, you know? And it, you no, know, stick with it. Stick with your yeah. dreams, guys. Stick with your dreams. Stick with the dreams, exactly. So she votes for Janelle and Phaedra votes for Janelle and she's like, I do love you. I hope we can still be friends. <laughs> Phaedra's so, so cold. <laughs> Sandra, of course, votes against Janelle, and she's like, she was the last, she was the last faithful recruited, and that's why she changed on them. And then Janelle's like, spoken like a true traitor. Yeah, drink that water. You're nervous, aren't you? You are nervous, aren't you, Sandra? And she's like, my mouth is dry. I had to watch people run today, and I'm still exhausted from it. All right? <laughs> Just, yeah, okay, okay, Sandra, whatever. It's just, you're a traitor. No, you're a fucking traitor. No, you're a fucking traitor. You're a traitor, bitch. No, you're the biggest traitor, so fuck off, you. <laughs> you fuck off. And Kate's like, oh, this is great. I love this season already. I love a you are fight. This is great. So Peter votes for Dan. John this fight was dedicated to anybody who thinks there are actual script writers in reality television. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and yet still more funny than most that comes on TV right now. So then Peter Peter and Dan, I'm sorry, Peter and John both vote for Dan. And so does Janelle, of course. And then Parvati votes for Janelle, of course, because Parvati is a traitor. And then uh, Kevin, of course, votes for Janelle. Trishel votes for Dan. And then Dan's like, I vote for Janelle. She's either a traitor or a faithful that I just can't trust in this game. And CT, obviously, Janelle. Sheree votes for Janelle. And Bergie Sh it votes for Dan. And he's like, uh, I'm a little suspicious that J Janelle you know now you come up with a name and of course it's janelle who just came for you duh yeah, the only the only one that 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 dan has been able after all this time the only theory that dan has is that it could be janelle yeah and kate's like well listen i did watch big brother and i learned that those people are extremely stupid but you also have to go with the group or otherwise they stone you in the street so janelle bye also there's really only room for one overly judgmental blonde lady <laughs> on this season goodbye I was deeply heartbroken that we could never have at least just one episode of Kate and Janelle interacting. Cause like that would have been one of my greatest dreams come true. Oh yeah. So Janelle is voted out and she goes in the circle of life. My husband did that. No crystal get off of this crystal. <laughs> you don't even do enough on your own show to deserve to be here. Go. <laughs> Janelle's, Janelle's like, by the way, everyone, Crystal Kung, she's also a traitor. Just want to put that out there. She's in the accusation circle. So she's like, like in Big Brother, I played a very competitive game. And like in Big Brother, I was loyal and I was honest. And I'm a faithful, you idiots. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like in Big Brother, you just went too crazy for no reason. You went ham on people for no reason and totally lost yeah. votes from people that you needed janelle come on so yeah. she's voted out and i'm mad at her because i actually love watching her on this show and it was too fucking soon man and bergie's like good job guys good job you're trusting the traitors and trey's like 
Well, I just had to go by her actions. I went by nothing else but her actions. Also, I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> what is this game we're playing? <laughs> Sheree has no idea what game she's on. <laughs> she's just like, I'm on. She just thinks she's on vacation in Scotland and has like very strange rules in her Airbnb. And MJ goes, wow. And Perky says, for some people, maybe. <laughs> oh my God. By the way, I am, my fingers are crossed that the people look at who voted for Janelle and who voted for Dan and like use some logic to say, okay, everyone who voted for Dan, we have a very strong reason to believe that they were probably faithful. So now we have a smaller pool of people that we can accuse of being traitors. Can we do that? Like, oh my goodness. No, that's all. Well, that's my dream. It'll never happen. I won't do that. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for entering that idea into, into evidence. To play this game, you must treat it like a game of chess. That's a game. Well, you can look it up when you get home, because I'm sure <laughs> none of you know what. Have happens. you heard of chess? Do you know about chess? <laughs> you know it's more than a cake, right? <laughs> well, you've just sacrificed a piece. That's bad in chess. A smart people's <laughs> game. Right. All right, let's say it like this. This is like a game of Scrabble. Damn it. We need new people here to help me out with this one. All right, all right. We got to, okay. Think of this, a little bit of this way. This is like the game of life. Uh, and you've just inherited your uncle's skunk farm. Which I don't know if this is helping you guys. I think you're now confused. You guys are all, okay, you're all texting your lawyers about skunks. No, you didn't actually get a skunk farm. It's a terrible analogy. They all think Sleep they have money well. to them. You're all stupid. So he leaves. And MJ's like, oh my God, this was like my first mistake. That I've ever made. <laughs> uh, and Kevin's like, no, no, this was my problem. We went down my route. This was my mistake. And Dan's like, listen, I just want to say, whoever wrote my name down, I get it. You know, it's all good. Okay, I'm not going to be mad at you right now. Oh my God, he's so obvious. So... so obvious. Yeah, so now Bergy is like very convinced. They're going to find the traitor soon. They're going to find it soon. And Dan's like, I just dodged a bullet by delivering votes away from me and on to Janelle. I've won, season of, uh, won a season of Big Brother. I resurrected from my own funeral. And that round table was harder than both of those things combined. So now um, they're all dismissed. And Bergy talks with Dan and uh, Kevin and a few other people. And he's like, Dan please speak up with us. And he's like, I will, I will from now on. Now I'm gonna speak up. And they go, okay, so do you have any idea? Do you have any names to throw out there? And he's like, uh, if I survive tonight, then I'll throw one out in the morning. I gotta sleep on it. Like, oh, if you Jesus. guys give me a few hours to come up with the plan, I will totally have something because I'm a faithful. And Bergie is like, well, I'm watching you because your name's on my chalkboard right now until you. OK, Bergie, calm down. OK, now is the point where you're like, hey, a trader just stayed in the game. And the next move, the traders get to murder somebody. So be quiet now. But, but Bergie has a shield. So I, maybe that's why he's feeling like he can pop off a little bit. Oh, that's true. But they lied and said that they don't that Bergie doesn't have a shield. They lied and said that oh, Peter right. Trishel Trishel has a shield, right? Well, but the thing is this, no one in this game actually pays attention to people's behavior and what would what would be expected behavior <laughs> given yeah. given the set of circumstances that, that each individual person is in. So it's not really an issue for Berkey. Right. So then um Dan's like, Oh my god, you know what? I would love to see the face the look on your faces if I'm murdered tonight, right? You know what I mean, guys? You know what I mean? That would be crazy, right? If I was murdered, right? Right? Right, guys? Yeah. High five. As a faithful, High it could totally happen, right? Right. <sighs> So, um, so anyway, CT and MJ, they like, they're patching things up because I guess CT's like, oh, hey, you like me again? She's like, when have I never, when have I never liked you? Whatever. And, uh, she calls him silly Billy from Philly and Manili with a pocket full of chili. Didn't really make sense. So, uh, so then, uh, uh, Kate is looking at the, uh, the wall of wall of portraits, the ones that have all the X's on them and stuff. And she's with Dan and Poverty and Sandra and everyone. And she's like, huh? Well, I'm so bummed I didn't get to meet Ek and Sue. Well, what happened there? Was she just like too dumb to be on the show? You can say it if it's true. Hmm. And they tell her that she got poisoned. And Phaedra's like, yeah, they gave her a slow acting poison. And she goes, huh, I'm a little surprised these people aren't doing better. I mean, they're just all looking at me like, 
Please help us. We haven't gotten any traders. We suck. Please help us. I mean, I rose to fame on a f- show about a boat who never s- gave anybody a life jacket. Literally have watched multiple people drown. Why are they looking at me? I'm here to drown you. And then Kate literally says, well, I'm not taking any wine from poverty that she just offered. Pour your own cup. Am I right? Yeah. Where did she pull that out of? Where did that I don't come know. from? I don't and know. I think she react? probably watches the show and was like, oh, my God. Good Lord. You've got a villain like Parvati coming at you with a glass of wine and you take it I'm like idiots. <laughs> but <laughs> everyone's like, what a funny joke by Kate Chastain. Probably shouldn't read into it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Pedro's like, pour your own cup. Jesus. So So now Peter is meeting up with John and Kevin and Berkey, and he's like, okay, listen, I told CT, Parvati, and Dan already in confidence and all very secretly that I got the shield with Janelle, and it was just to give huge cover because um, now we have protection to more than just two people, right? So when who really has the shield is Berkey and Trishel, we're going to learn so much by voting. Like, (laughs) well, it doesn't work if you tell literally everybody in the house. Right. And also, if the traitors just murder someone else, you will learn nothing. Nothing. Right. <laughs> so so um, Peter's like, if they if they murder, I, I told only three people. Well, and then the three of you. And then I told Alan. And then, oh, I, I think I did make an announcement. Now that I think about it, at the round table, I did say, you guys, I'm the only one with a shield. So I did say that. So I think everyone knows, but only three people really know. Right? It's going to work, guys. <laughs> um and he's like yeah and if it's blocked it's because they're actually protected like it's got to be one of those three it's one of those three guys it's one of those three and um so now that they're, they're kevin's just like how did you learn that did they teach you this stuff in pi in in a pilot school <laughs> that was a joke i learned how to tell jokes when i was preparing for my role in in Cat loves Los Angeles. Was that one of his credits? <laughs> Cat loves Los Angeles. Asian persuasion. Learn that in Asian persuasion. 23. It's coming out. <laughs> so everybody's heading up to bed and Kate's like, so what was Janelle's room like? Was it big? <laughs> Anybody want to show me? Is it better than mine? <laughs> I mean, Kevin's like, you're taking Janelle's room? Wow, you're a traitor. She's like, oh, why wouldn't I? She's gone. Hmm. So then we go to the turret and the traitors are gathering and uh dan's like i let Pedro and poverty have the last two murders so now i'm going from complete defensive mode to 100 percent aggressive mode which uh by the way is literally exactly how janelle described his gameplay he plays possum until the numbers are on his side and then he goes into attack mode like it's literally that why did people not listen to her yeah and um he's like okay guys we're not doing great um and phaedra's like oh my god you are in trouble (laughs) he's like yeah but i've still made it she goes you've got to be ready dan because you're still in the hot seat and he goes yeah that's something you know i can be more vocal she goes but your vocal has to make sense it can't just be i'm gonna wait until i know for sure that doesn't make sense dan he's like okay you know she is fully in lawyer lawyer mode to her client like she yeah how many times has she had this conversation with her shady clients <laughs> like and this is yeah lo- uh phaedra parks esquire you're athlete. losing here you're losing the jury buddy and um parvesh is uh, parvesh sorry i know a guy named parvesh hi parvesh parvati's <laughs> hi, parvesh. like um so who are you gonna put up as a name if you're gonna be more vocal and he goes uh i'm gonna sleep on that <laughs> phaedra goes my god you're doing it to us <laughs> <laughs> so she's uh, like oh come on she goes listen you better get ready because if you keep playing like this i'm gonna have to embalm you myself you know <laughs> they are so mad at him They're like come on dan and he's like okay is this the round table or is it the traitor's turret the property's like we're just trying to give you some mild encouragement would you like a headband i find it to be very helpful and comforting he's like no 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 this isn't my first rodeo. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Pedro's like, well, honey, I don't mean to act like it because they know it's not your first rodeo. I mean, so honey, he's saying, okay, like it. Yeah, he's saying, guys, okay, but well, we have an issue tonight, okay? You know, do does anyone have an inkling of who has the shield? And Par- uh, Parvati's like, oh, well, Peter's told me after the challenge, and it was just us. He said that he and Janelle 
have the shields. And he's like, but I'm just telling you in confidence. And he goes, yeah, well, he told me that too. And she says, okay, well, obviously then he's lying <laughs> he because if he would tell you and me, then he probably thinks that we're traitors and he's trying to sniff us out. So now we have to murder someone who is not there because obviously they don't have the shields, right? Right. And so Dan's like, yeah, I mean, and Parker's like, well, do you trust Peter? And he's like, I don't know. I don't think he's that savvy. And Parker's like, but I think to be safe, we need to pick someone who wasn't in that group today. And Dan's like, okay, I'm going to tell you, I need this murder. And it's rolling the dice, but we have to take out Bergy. He said, there's no way he's not going to write my name down next. Oh, no. No, 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 no. And Parvati just moans. She's like, oh, God. And Dan's like, listen, I know you're tied with him, but I think Sandra's a waste. You know, MJ's a waste. How is Sandra or MJ a waste? MJ also called out your name. I know. Parvati then suggests John. And um, then Dan is like, Dan's basically like he wants to roll the dice with Bergy. And Petra's like, on oh, Bergy. That's desperate. Uh. <laughs> That's just She's desperate. Yeah, they know it. One, they they seem to know at this point that the people who are playing the outside, someone has a shield, and Peter's lying and saying it's him. So that only leaves four other people, and he's going to choose one, and he's also going to choose the most obvious one because he was sitting there being accused of this person the whole night. Oh my god! Yeah, and so and part I don't know why Parvati's pushing for John, but she is, and Pedro's like, look, John's calculating, but you know. If you have the correct conversation and interaction with him, you can probably sway him. So the Dan says the choices are John, play it safe and do John, Sandra, or MJ, which he thinks is a waste, or roll the dice on Bergie. And so Phaedra's like, but I love Bergy. <laughs> and Dan says, well, I'm pretty confident he doesn't have a shield, you know? So this is this murder is going to either win me the game or it's going to lose me the entire game. And she's like, well, I can't believe I'm agreeing to this. But at the end of the day, I'm a team player. So let the chips fall where they may. So this is Dan's thing, I think, since his last season of Big Brother, where it's he's about to go out and then he makes some huge move that shocks everybody and is enough to keep him in the game. And it looks like from the coming next week, and they edit these things so that we can't really tell what's going to happen. Yeah. But it looks like he finally does go to the round table and accuse somebody, and it better not be Phaedra. If he... <laughs> Are they allowed to turn on other traitors? Oh, hell yeah. Remember last season, that's what happened. Um, they threw... I think they threw... Did they throw Cody under the bus? Oh, it was Cody, throw, right? Oh yeah, they definitely like. I think so. Yeah. Um, I uh, I think this is a distraction. Like, I would love for Dan to whiff with Bergie. I don't think he's going to do it because it just it would be so, Bergie was so vocal about Dan being the traitor that if Dan kills Bergie, that just brings so much more heat onto Dan. Unless Dan decides he's going to do this thing where he says. If I were the traitor, that would be the dumbest thing for me to do. I would never do that as the traitor. Why would I kill someone who is onto me? And Dan is capable of having that conversation. So I don't know. I'm like, I cannot, I'm like, I cannot wait to see how this pans out. Um, I hope, I hope it just goes like crazy wrong. Yeah. Commercials. Here comes one right now. Okay, well, that is the end of the Traders Recap. Now we're going to talk about Real Housewives of Potomac for a little bit. Yeah, so Potomac, um, you know, <laughs> Potomac is having a season. It's having a season. What can I say? I don't um, you know, look, Potomac is always fun to watch uh, either, you know, even now. Even now. I mean, today we got some gold. We got some little gold nuggets from this show. One was we found out that Giselle and Ashley are going to be starting an athleisure fashion line. Ashley and Giselle, two of the least fashionable people to ever appear on Bravo. And this is a network built around Kyle Richards. So that's saying something. Two of the least tasteful people on Bravo starting an athleisure line. And it's going to be called GNA. <laughs> Yeah, and every time they mentioned like their athleisure line, the producers put up a, their logo on the on the screen, and then they added kind of like that falcon noise, that noise that normally plays when someone's walking through a deserted canyon. It's like, 
<laughs> yes. And, like I was at their way of saying this bre- this brand is dead on arrival because literally Giselle is Giselle is like known for being like one of the worst dressed people on Bravo. So the fact that she's coming out with any sort of fashion line just feels wrong. Well, and what we see of it is terrible. They have some like pink lace for the like legging pants that Giselle is wearing, I think. It's just is not looking good. And Ashley has to go, wait a minute, I'm not sure about this. Is Velour breathable? And she's like, oh. <laughs> Why is Velour in the conversation? She's like, well, here's what we're going for with this. We're going for ages about 12 years old to 65. (laughs) Wow. I love a targeted demo. Specificity. Specificity. It's like, it's going to be a little Lululemon mixed with Rihanna's Fenty. It's like for 12 year old. (laughs) For 12 year old. (laughs) I don't know. It's it's to me. It's reading more like what was it called? Lulu Row, Lulu La Row, whatever the <laughs> Lulu Row. Yeah, yeah. That's what it, to me. This this speaks of an MLM where you, like you get to have you know that you get to choose certain things and it's, and you put your brand on and say this is what I'm selling, or whatever. Like something just feels fishy about this to me already. Yeah, um, it looks terrifying, and uh, she says she wants it to be like Lululemon, but with rhinestones. <laughs> so, <laughs> sounds sounds super comfortable. Uh, good yeah. luck to you two. I so don't then- trust a. I, I don't trust, by the way, a late season um, announcement of like a fashion line. Like for that's why I, I get some sort of MLM vibe off of this because one doesn't just say oh, we're starting an athleisure line and here we already have our samples. Like, I feel like the ramp up to start an athleisure line is is long and difficult. And so I feel like they're just plugged into some sort of sketchy group of people, almost like those people that were funding uh, Sonia's, uh, Sonia's clothing, those, those guys from New Jersey. Like, this is something is something is fishy here. I'm going to tell you that right now. Oh, wait, do you mean when she got picked up for... Um century 21 yeah well, was that the same uh, actually, thing? That was maybe a like the year thing, right it was a year before that actually it was like remember there was that guy who had like or was it bethany who went in and was like okay let me let, let me look at your books i don't understand your books what's going on here why what's this what's this expense i don't understand this why use this paper do you even have a pen here what sort of office doesn't have pens um i've also got some bad news here i just looked up gna apparel and it is already a company <laughs> Ooh. GNA is a clothing brand. DM for orders. All GNA products are made manually based on the customer's measurements and are non-returnable. Let me look at this other it, one. Are they GNA doing athleisure? Apparel. Is it possible that GNA is a company and then then Giselle and Ashley just at, like made the initials work for them? Like they're just going to be selling GNA stuff? It's like we're calling it GNC. Clothes that you can eat for nutrition. Um, this is... They also do have their own website which is um christmas decoration like black and white christmas decorations like i guess christmas decorations oh, made by um uh, who's it's that? like mackenzie child yes it's like a variation of mackenzie child it's like german expressionism turned into you know christmas ornaments yes and their website i guess went up at christmas so this is christmas stuff so they're really keeping on top of that i mean your episode just came out about this maybe update it from beyond christmas you know but they've got what five things they've got a, a pretty simple t-shirt with a crooked uh by the way this is so non wrong guys this um logo and they've got a baseball cap a knit cap a pair of socks another t-shirt and a a sleeveless shirt that says gna so and now by the way also the way that their logo is with the n the n to me reads like an r Gra. To me like gra. gra. Yeah. They should have actually like they should have called it GNA like like Giselle and Ashley Ware and that way it could have been G N A W. No. No. Well that's the response that they're probably going to get. But they had um uh, they have six items here. So maybe they just haven't really gone there but it says full line coming spring 2024. So there you go. I guess we'll okay, well. we'll have to wait and see but so far uh I I hate Giselle's white socks and a black cap. <laughs> I hate Janelle's top on this website. It's just like it's so, it's too much. It's just too. It's like it's it's too like it's the logo all over it, and it's like not in a way that looks cool to me. It looks like it's just saying 
Nag, 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 nag. <laughs> it literally says nag under her breasts. I'm saying grag. Grag, 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 grag. <laughs> it's grag, like a worse edge. It's like we just, we, we, we basically take out what we put into it. Yeah. Um, and they're both wearing the knit caps and have a tree decorated in the socks. Okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to time to do a little bit of a brand refresh now that it's no longer Christmas. I'm just yeah. out there. Yeah. Also, I don't know how Robin's going to feel about you guys selling baseball caps. Hello, I know. I've forgotten about Robin's <laughs> baseball cap line, especially when Embellish is you know taking the fashion world by storm. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to step on any toes in the world of fashion. Yep. Okay. So then we see Karen doing scenes with her family where uh, Aunt Val and David. She's like, Do you guys remember my Aunt Val and my cousin David? Don't you? Mm -hmm. We are going to start the Kern Resort and Spa in Surrey County. <laughs> yes. They're, they're trying to get this thing up and running here. So um, she's. You know, she's bought her grandmother's uh, house, old house, and she's going to turn it into a guest resort. And, um, <laughs> you know, this is going to be the thing that's going to turn Surrey County, USA into the next Opryland, if you ask me. Yeah, and I like that uh, she goes, she has a meeting with them and she goes, well, have you thought of your secession? I love when they showed that clip of her <laughs> spinoff show where they put, tried playing the succession music to make it the same thing. She's like, have you thought about your succession? And so she has them over and she goes, yeah, so now that I have the house, I'm trying to figure out if it's going to be a structure we can use or if we are going to demolish it and build a new structure. I'm like, Karen, you just said last week your grandmother's house is going to be a historical site. <laughs> in Surrey County where you're going to celebrate the town and let people see like a hundred year old house or whatever. And now you're going to demolish it. But then later on when they go to the house, I was like, is it safe for people to be inside the structure? <laughs> I was like this thing. Uh, I feel like this thing is barely standing up. It does not feel safe in there. Just as so she calls it a resort too is hilarious. Like, okay, people are going to go um, pay to stay in front of your aunt Val's house. <laughs> Because you've been there, I'm trying to confuse. I'm, I'm kind of confused about what this is supposed to be, but but it's a place for retreats. Also, you can have your corporate retreat there, <laughs> you know, and be there. Uh, later on, Karen and Ray have actually a scene at a restaurant, which I bring up only because it cracked me up how ridiculous it was. First of all, when they order, this is what the order was. Mm, I think I'm going to start with a dragon roll, and then I think I'm going to have a shrimp alfredo. I was like, what menu is this? <laughs> What menu has a dragon roll that you can also get a shrimp alfredo on? And then while she's sitting there with her big bowl of shrimp alfredo, she starts talking about how she has to take her health more carefully because there's <laughs> there's plaque in her arteries. She's like, well, I got to be careful with that uh, with the, with my cholesterol now. Ooh, this shrimp alfredo is delicious, delicious. And specifically, she has five percent of plaque. Got five percent of plaque in my in my heart. I need to start taking this seriously now, Ray. I'm gonna have shrimp Alfredo, and you're not gonna share this, are you, Ray? Ray why are you looking at the happy hour? We're gonna look over here at this other page, full price, which means I love my wife. Okay, Ray. Uh, so I'm not gonna share with Ray. I'm gonna have my own thing now, Ray. What are you gonna have? Are you gonna share that with me, Ray? Wait, I've got a question. Uh, I know you have a dragon roll. Is it possible that you might have a Alfredo roll? Just some sort of roll where we could put Alfredo sauce in the middle. Just roll it up with rice, because I would love that right now. Anyway, my heart. <laughs> oh, one thing that uh, that also we should mention is that Karen uh, is thinking about using her grandma's place potentially to be a uh, like uh, like a weed farm or something. Because Val is like, just don't do anything freaky, and she's like, like what? She's like, you know, like people like naked and running around like hippies or whatever she's like no 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 but i am thinking about getting into ganja which of course like gives all the post producers all sorts of like erections because now they can fill the screen with like ganja imagery like this is i think it's time to maybe like close the chapter on goofy visual effects for weed on bravo like i think like weed is legal like almost no, like that's everywhere. karen's like thing like when they show karen the high cam you know or karen like has her hair when the moon is in they love giving karen those moments remember last year when she took her covid medicine or whatever and she was all high that was like one of the top moments of the year they played the clip like 10 times 
Uh, well, that was just my personal critique because I feel like it's every show. Someone says, mentions weed, and then we are stuck with like five minutes of like the groovy visual effects. Yeah, yeah. someone came up with it for uh, Shaws of Sunset. Remember for uh, Asa when she would do those things? Like, I'm just a hippie, yes. and they would do that, and now they use them for every show. They're like, we yeah. paid 15 extra dollars an hour to get that effect made, and we're going <laughs> to use it for every show. Seriously. <laughs> Okay, so then um, that dinner was also funny because Karen is going to make a cast trip going to this house in Surrey County uh, to do yard work, which we find out later. And it's only going to be a certain amount of people who get to come on this very glamorous trip because Karen only has a certain amount of liability insurance, so she can only have so many people. I don't know what the fuck any of this means. I'm taking it that Karen is lying out her ass again, but I don't really know why. Uh, and then she tells Ray, I put the names that I wanted of people into a hat, and then I pulled the names, Ray. <laughs> so I'm not lying. I did pull the names out of a hat, Ray. 20, 20, 20. He's like, I just want the popcorn shrimp. That's on the happy hour menu. Absolutely not, Ray. Hmm. So then um, Mia goes to a salt sanctuary, which what's with this show and their salt? Didn't they, they do, do this Dorf. before? Yes. They went to a salt cave or something before, right? Karen. Yeah. Karen and Ashley went, I think. I, I specifically remember that scene. I remember being, I just, for some reason, that scene is like seared into my head because I remember uh, watching it many years ago and I remember falling asleep during that scene. And for some reason, like I remember waking up and being like, they're in salt. I don't know. Like, for some reason, I'm just like, yes, they've done this before. But this was, was like a, a different a salt place. One. Yeah, this, <laughs> this one was like lawn like, chairs. Lawn yeah. chairs and, sa and salt. Because the other one, I feel like, was salt walls, where they yes. had the pink salt walls. And this one, they're just like, here's some salt on the floor. Sit in <laughs> this lawn chair. Yeah, that one, the one they went to, it was had like salt bricks and everything. And it was also like... It was like in the it was like a back room of something else and it looked really nice, but this one was just literally Kirkland brand folding chairs that you get to go see Dave Matthews and, and tailgate in the parking lot with. And the lady who runs it's like, Okay, uh, we're gonna turn on a humidifier, just breathe in the salts. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, thank you. So they go and Mia's talking to Robin. Um and uh robin is tells a story about how this one time i was talking to karen and she like opened up her phone and i kid you not there was a picture of me and juan and the kids and like i've never told a single soul that story i'm like yeah because it's not an interesting story like <laughs> she probably sent the photo she probably had the photo because she probably sent it to giselle to be like look at her trying to pretend like she has a good family so robin is now convinced that karen has actually been like obsessed with her in a quite literal way yeah um no she was mocking some news story about your husband cheating I'm exactly sure. that's exactly yeah. why that photo was there mm. um so mia's like so i got a lawyer for my divorce and i'm thinking of looking into that um are you guys in therapy <laughs> and robin's like no we don't really need therapy she's <laughs> Are you sure that you don't need it? And saying, no, because our stuff is like, it's not stuff between us. It's like stuff that other people brings between us. You know, it's not like actually me and Ro uh, me and Wanda have a problem. Yeah. You guys seem like you're doing great. Uh, really uh, feel like you guys are not candidates to have therapy whatsoever. You guys, yeah. uh, everything is just smooth sailing. Yeah, it's going great over there. Um, and then Eddie and Wendy have date night at Jamaican. Um, this is one of those scenes just they put in to make us feel even dumber. Because remember at the beginning of the season when Eddie was wearing that shirt that said Happy Eddie? And we're like, why would you just take a like a slam from somebody else and make a shirt? Like, everything doesn't need to be a t-shirt. Well, it was not just for t-shirts. It was for his weed line called Happy Eddie. Yeah, so they're just talking about Happy Eddie and um for like Wendy's talking about how oh my goodness this job that she's this this show she's trying to launch is so difficult. She's got to find a producer and guests and yada yada yada. I'm like 
we need to end this storyline right now. And then Eddie's doing his whole like launching Happy Eddie, and it takes a lot of time. And he's he's a lawyer, and it's taking away time from that. And they're both busy. And she goes to sleep sometimes, and he's not in bed yet. And he's comes in at two a.m. And they're busy. They're busy with their two very dull entrepreneurial endeavors. Well, hers is real. I mean, she has a YouTube thing. Um, she's got seventeen point three followers. I just looked it up. It's called wow. the Doctor Wendy Osefo Show. The the Dr. Wendy show. Wow. And the first episode is called, What If You Fly? What If You Fly? <laughs> what If You Fly? Yeah. Uh, I thought it would be week, like, What If You Fly domestically, but, you know, don't want to spend that money. Or something. But it's just, What If You Fly? Just fly. That's fly. it. Um, she had said last week that she had to fire that original producer, which I was surprised because I love that original's producer, the original producer's idea of just like, having an apartment like in the middle of a construction zone and uh whatever whatever her big ideas were and uh wendy's like yeah i had to fire her because she gave me a contract that said she gets 50 percent of the show and i said you're out of here so she hired these kind of intern well i shouldn't say intern but really young younger people who mm -hmm. she's like right how much do you charge five dollars you're hired <laughs> so they're doing that we also find out in this scene that eddie is coming home at 2 a.m every day I don't know Which, if he's coming home at 2 a.m. I think he's just not getting into bed until 2 a.m. I mean, I wrote he's been coming home at 2 a.m., but I don't know. I mean, is he out partying? What's Eddie doing? I took it that he was like downstairs working and he's not getting into bed until 2. Oh, it could okay. be that he's staying out. I'm not sure. I mean, look, Wendy's, Wendy's YouTube show, I think we said earlier in the season, this is actually a really good fit for her. I just think that like the storyline of her having to... Um, gather producers and interns to put on a youtube show is just like not that inherently fascinating you know me. what i need an update on you gathering Wix. that's what i need an <laughs> are we just going to pretend that never happened are we not going to talk about the Wix anymore that was a huge deal in my life personally i need more of that <laughs> yeah that's best but he also made a cheers at the beginning of this dinner where he's like well cheers to us both having our own life or something and i was like what this couple's so odd to me mm -hmm. Um, but very well dressed. I love, I love their fashion style and I love that they always seem like they're having fun. Yeah. I love couple. them together. I just, I'm, I'm a little worried that we've, we're, we're, we're sort of like hitting the end of the road with for Wendy, which makes me sad because I've always really enjoyed her, but I think that I, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried that there's not much left for her. I feel like we're sort of scraping the bottom of the barrel now with her storylines. Yeah. So Giselle and Ray have their day night. We already talked about that. Okay. So now Karen is not Giselle and Ray. Sorry, that was wrong. That would have <laughs> wow, been an wow. interesting plot. <laughs> yes. Uh... <laughs> Karen and Ray. Uh, but then um, there's very dramatic music because Karen is texting the girls, her chosen few that she pulled out of a fake hat, and she's seeing who's going to come. And Giselle refuses. She's like, no, thank you. But thank you for the offer. Well, because it's Candace. It's Candace, it's Wendy, uh, is it Ashley and Giselle are the, are the, uh, the selections. And so everyone says yes, except for Giselle, because Giselle's like, I am not going to Karen's farm with Candace. I will not be in a sprinter van with Candace. She actually says it's dangerous, that it would be very dangerous for her to be around Candace and Wendy. So there's Giselle using her. It's a little bit of an alarmist, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so that's the first try. So then, um, Giselle and Sharice go over to hang out at NECA's house. I'm like, well, this is what you get for refusing to be around the cast. Okay. You get a NECA and Giselle, uh, Sharice scene, Giselle. Have fun with that. Yeah. And basically Karen, since Karen couldn't get Giselle to come, you know, cause Karen wanted to have a big fight at her, at her farmhouse. She's like, well, fuck it. I'll just invite everyone now. So now she's like, oh yeah, great news. I got the, uh, I got my liability insurance increased at the last second. Yes. Turns out that state farm has a 24 hour hotline for increasing liability insurance on farmhouses. So got that taken care of in the middle of the night and now you all can come. Yeah. So now Robin's like, no, sorry. Last minute. I can't go. And she just writes back. Cool. Robin. Cool. 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 Robin. Yeah, I already committed to spending the day not going to therapy. And um, NECA, of course, is like, she's like, I want to go. <laughs> Basically, she's like, yeah, I, you know, everyone's like kind of disrespected by the fact that there's like, oh, 
oh, so, oh, we get to be like sloppy seconds. Like Mia's like, oh, I can't get past the whole thing of like the original original invite, and everyone's acting like they're like offended that they Karen were not wrote, oh, Mia, you need to. That was her response. <laughs> but Neka's like, shit, I'm an, I'm a newbie here. I really got to go to this. So <laughs> she's like, okay. Oh yeah, and also it's a group scene, guys. You're on an ensemble show. You have to go do these you don't get to just decide every episode that's the problem with your season we say it every week so we don't need to pound it into the ground now but geez guys you're on a tv show together yeah exactly so um it winds up being neca candace wendy ashley and karen going to surrey county so it's boring they get <laughs> That's, 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 that's the gist of it. it. They get onto this bus to go. <laughs> it's really lame. And they go get gas station margaritas and Wendy starts giggling a lot. That was pretty much the big, the big thing in this. But then they get to the place and Karen makes them do yard work, which is super weird. And uh, then, and we actually have to watch a big goofy scene of them wackily doing yard work. And I just felt for the, for the people on the show. Cause I was like, you know, Wendy and Candace hate these bitches too, but they show up, they show up yeah. and they do it, you know, you can't. Yeah. And Candace and Ashley too. Um, but yeah, this is the, well, yeah, they come I in. Say? you said Wendy and Candace, uh, you know what? That, I see. That's what you meant. But either way, you're right. People show up. But it's like, as a result, we're watching, like, it's supposed to be a scene of them fixing up the estate that's going to be sort of like a nice, nice thing. But we're just literally watching them rake weeds out from under a tree. And then, like, someone pretends that there's a snake. And then Wendy freaks out. And you're like, it's like what you said earlier. We're just watching them do yard work. <laughs> like, it's they weird. Travel this way to do yard work. It's weird. Like, nobody there was like, you know, the season is really lagging. Let's go no place and watch him do yard work for nothing. You know, so like, what? Okay, so then they all sit down and have some wine. And they bring up this Wendy fight. This Wendy and NECA thing about the mom being a... I mean, come on. Is it really this deep? I can't believe they're still talking well, about This shit was funny when it first came up. Because we had never really had a your mother is a witch accusation. Or accusations of the mother calling cousins and having people go through people to you know say that i'll put it i'll put a i'll put your name into a fucking shrine or whatever and uh that was kind of fun for five minutes it's over and it's no longer fun and they're not going to make up over it but neca has decided that she's going to have her first big event be an unpacking party where she's going to invite the ladies over to her home to unpack for her fuck you <laughs> okay I hey know. who does that uh, and she does invite Wendy, but wow, you're going to invite Wendy over to do more manual labor? Like, we're already doing Karen's gardening. What the hell? Are we just all having a honey-do list that we have to do for each other now? <laughs> I think so. And, uh, yeah, so they're trying to, like, get Wendy and NECA to bury the hatchet. But Wendy's like, first of all, you called me a bitch. And NECA's like, yeah, I don't deny that. I definitely called you a bitch, but that's because you cursed at me first. You can't curse at someone and expect them not to react. She's like, and then you called my mother a witch, and you said I talked about this about your sister or whatever. And the point is, they just go back into the same mode that they were in before. And and now Wendy's whole thing is like, oh, I don't. Is Wendy having an event too that she's inviting people to? I think Wendy's having. I think they both are having an invite, right? Because Neca invites them all, and Wendy's like. I don't remember, but like either way, well, Wendy gives a speech where she's like, I'm not going to, I refuse to be around someone who is fundamentally unimportant in my life. It's like, okay, it's wow. My happiness. And she's like, and then she's like, I'm not going to suddenly go to her event because there's like steps that have been like the way that we get back on track. There's like steps that have been skipped. You can't go. She's like, you can't go from step A to point Z. I was like, I was, I was, for, I was like, first of all, I was offended that you went from step to point in the same sentence. That was like very Larsa of you, but whatever uh, but she's now saying like no 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 like you we just can't do that like there's steps that have to be taken and i'm not gonna go and it's we're supposed to be um concerned about whether or not wendy is gonna be helping neca unpack stuff at her house <laughs> Like Basically. no one cares. And guess who else doesn't care? The cast. I mean, the cast was so bored in this scene, having to watch this tired fight, having to watch Wendy's pre-planned monologue about 
well, I refuse to be a wound. Like doing one of her like terrible reads that she's practiced 20 times before she got there and still kind of bungles. No one cares. No one's really invested in NECA. NECA hasn't been able to really do much. Like, okay, your journey of eggs or whatever. Like, seen it, been there. It's just not great. The audience is bored. The people on the show are bored. And then you've got you've got the cast refusing to film with each other. Wendy gives a big speech about how she's not going to film with NECA. And then Giselle and Robin refusing to shoot. You guys are shooting yourselves in the foot. Stop it. Make a fucking effort over there. Yeah, because this is really, an el- we said this every week, but I would just want to reiterate, this is an elite cast. This is like an all-star cast for The Real Housewives. This show should be like our number one or number two every single time it comes out. And it really has been. And for it to be like this rough right now, and that like everyone agrees, like everyone agrees on on the internet. And it's like, it's it doesn't matter what everyone thinks. It just matters what we think. But in this case, you know, we're all kind of like, fix this, fix this, fix it, Jesus. So anyway, um, it's still fun to check in on. But well, there's good like, news in the world. Up. Well, they fired the producer. We've already talked about that, right? Of uh, both God. Atlanta, um, Eric, Eric Fuller. Fuller. Uh, so that's that was good news. And then the other news that was just released was that not only did they fire him, but yesterday it was going around, I'm looking to see if this is true. Yesterday it was going around that Nini and Portia are coming back. Wow. To Atlanta. But now that I look at it, I'm not seeing anywhere. So maybe it's this like, was oh, fake news. They're just literally on a flight to Atlanta. <laughs> they're not actually coming back to the show. They're just going to the city. <laughs> I swear to you, I read that yesterday. Where did I read it? I thought it was like a People magazine thing, but people are always fucking around on the internet. And guess who's very easily tricked? <laughs> Me. I believe everything I read. Well, you know what? We're going to put a to be continued on that one. And I'm sure if we get more solid news about that, we'll talk about it uh, a week from today on Crappy Hour. Well, this was a screenshot. It says people.com entertainment TV, Nini Leaks and Portia Gobadia. How do you pronounce her last name? That's one I don't know. I feel like I've never really heard it. I've only read it. Leaks and Portia Guobadia. Here's how I pronounce her name. Here's how I pronounce her last name. You know Portia, as in, so Portia, you know Portia. Anyway, (laughs) that's how I skip over her last name. I just say, you know Portia again. Like, obviously, there's only one Portia, so I don't even have to say her last name, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, right. I just Googled that exact headline and it did not come up. So I think that was false, everybody. I'm sorry. And I'm glad I Googled this time. It's of almost just... like our brains are fried because we've been recording for over two hours. So on that note, everyone, thank you all for listening. As always, we appreciate you so much. And uh, we will catch you on the next episode. Have a great day, everyone. Catch you next time. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurth. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch. It's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys.
Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch or Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.